Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our class six. It's our sixth of our free classes, so it's good to have everybody on board. You've followed me along this journey. It's been absolutely fantastic, and I think we've helped each other. Some of the messages that I've received over the last few weeks have been really amazing, humbling. Some of them have been quite emotional just to keep keep the spirits pulp of people, and uh, people have been dropping in, having a drink doing the class and doing it at different times as well. So it has been amazing and I really appreciate all your support. We have practically 700 subscribers now, which is a real achievement in the space of six weeks. And um, I just appreciate it. And thank you to everybody who's brought brought us this far. The technology's got better. So thanks to Pete for that, for all his support. Thanks to Jess as always and Michelle in the background. And what I want to say tonight, we said we were going to get to week six and make an announcement. So the announcement is, this is the last of the free classes. And people probably will have gathered that because the page of the website has now changed slightly. So this is the last one tonight I'm going to be doing free and we will be putting the videos up on YouTube. So what we are doing and what I really wanted to do, I was asked a couple of weeks ago to see if I would do an art class for uh, Prevent Breast Cancer. So as part of our sessions, and I thought, well, let's try and go one step further because I've done lots of work with Prevent Breast Cancer in the past. Prevent Breast Cancer is based in Manchester. It's the only UK charity entirely dedicated to the prediction and prevention of breast cancer. And if anybody's ever seen this, this was the bee that I painted for them. And that was two years ago. That was the Prevent Breast Cancer Bee. That's in the Withenshaw Centre over at Withenshaw in the Nightingale Centre at Withenshaw Hospital. So I painted that. I built up this relationship with them. I've supported them ever since. Uh, I've had two very close family members who've had breast cancer. One of them sadly passed away, um, age 52. And the other one, who is my age, which is, I'm not going to give away, obviously. Um, and she is now in remission. She's gone five years without so over the course of the time I've known the people that prevent breast cancer, I've built up a good relationship and I want to support them and continue supporting them. So what I want to do with the classes over the next six weeks from next week, we are going to put in a nominal charge for the class of five pound per week. And for your five pound, you will get access to me. So you'll get a personal email direct to me if you need any help or advice or even just support or just to chat. Um, if you sign up for six, we will be charging £25 over the six weeks. So in effect, you'll be getting one week for free. During the course of this, we'll be giving 20% of everything we make. We'll go straight to prevent breast cancer for the work they do here in Manchester and beyond. And if you look up their website, I think it's preventbreastcancer.org. Look at the work they do and you'll find it is an incredible charity. And, you know, we want to support them. We want to do good things. So let's take the last six weeks of doing good things for each other. And let's, you know, let's use the six weeks going forward to help other people because the times have been difficult during the pandemic to keep charities going. So also at the end of the month, I will be releasing 15 pieces of artwork again to support a local charity that's dear to me. And again, we will give 20% of the sales of those to prevent breast cancer again. So it's all going to go into the same pot. And at the end of it, we'll have a big announcement or a big party. Hopefully we'll be the other side of this pandemic by then. We'll be able to go out and all meet. And we can do a nice one of them, you know, where you get your big check and you hand it over and we can see what work they've done and how they go about using it. So from tonight, if you want to join the classes, you can sign up tonight if you want. If you're on the website, you'll be able to see you can buy one or buy all six. We'd appreciate your support. We've already got two or three signed up already for the six classes. So thank you very much already for the support that's going towards myself and to bre prevent breast cancer for the great work that they do. So tonight we're going to have a bit of fun in the art class. We're going to do something slightly simple first and then we're going to do something slightly which could be entertaining later on. We'll see how we all get on but I'm going to do the same sort of thing over the next six weeks. If you do sign up we will be doing the same sort of things. I'll give you access to contact me and you can suggest things that you want to draw. Hi, Emma. Um, and there's interaction tonight. Again, if you want to send some comments, 
send some comments online and we will put some of them on the screen. Hello from a very cold Texas. So last week we reached Texas, we reached South Africa. So this class really has gone global, so to speak. Again, when you've drawn tonight, share on Insta, share on Facebook, and let's share the love around. Let's keep all the happy vibes going, positive pictures. And even if you do not sign up, no, <laughs> no ad grudges. I'm not going to come sit around to your house or anything. I think it'd be great if you carry on drawing and carry on sharing your pictures and tag me in. And let's just keep the positive vibe going. And as we come out of this pandemic, hopefully through the other side, we can all be in a better place. Let's hope so anyway. So sorry for going on too much. I just wanted to get that message across. Prevent breast cancer. I'm going to be working with them over the next six weeks. So first thing tonight, we're going to do a very simple illustration. We're not going to do too much shading because I want it to be quite quick. And as with sport, I think that if you start with a little bit of drawing just to get you in the mood. Da, 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 da. Now, you can choose from any single butterfly that you wish to draw. I'm going to try and just get them on the screen enough. Okay. So my wife is, a, is an ambassador for Prevent Breast Cancer, and she's just uh, messaged on the screen there. She does a lot of great presenting from her and, and helps them enormously. So you can draw any one of these butterflies. This will take up probably the first 10, 15 minutes. Very simple illustrations. The kids will enjoy this. Choose which one you want to do. I'm going to choose. I'm not even sure because I've not even thought about it. I'm going to choose this one because it's the closest. So simply, as we've done in, e in the, in the uh, previous weeks, we want to create that curve because that's the curve. I'm going to be working on this, so ignore me if, you paint, if you're drawing one of the others. So a very simple curve. All we're doing is replicating it. I'll press on a bit so you've got a good idea of seeing it. And now the width of it, you can pretty much see that it's made up of that sort of distance. Okay. And then where does it intersect? And this is where we get it every week again. Where does it intersect the back? It intercepts sort of here and here. Okay. And then what we've got to do, we've got to create this nice soft curve here and into the back. So it's like a shallow S. So we're going to go down from here, out here, and then we're going to go down. And again with the butterfly and again with your drawing, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to look exactly like this. That's where the fun will come in in the second part of the class because <laughs> you'll see. You'll enjoy it anyway. So the back of it. If we look at the angle of that and then we look at this, I'm going to draw a straight line. It's not far off a straight line, so let's do a straight line. These are the guides that we need to get going. Okay. And then we're going to do a few of these ribs, a few of these spiny bits. And we're going to try and get, I think we'll go for, mm, we'll go for this bit because it pretty much connects not far off there, not far off there, in. And then I'm just going to do this sort of, again, just an interpretation of where I think that goes. And then we don't need all the bubbly things first. Let's just carry on up and carry on up. And then let's pull it back in there. And then we know where this guide goes from. I think it's a bit high, so I'm going to go down. I'm going to go over there. So a bit of a hump of a bridge there, yep. And then it comes back out again. So a soft curve up. Okay. And there is the very simple illustration and the very starting point. Now, hopefully everybody's got a rubber. I'm only using what I'm using. I'm using a H. But I know lots of people don't have access to all the pencils. Have I got, I've not even got a HB. Yeah, that's not good, is it? I'm not even got a HB, but it's pretty close to a HB anyway. Okay, so let's do its little head. We'll do its little head. It's literally a ball. Okay, there's the ball of its head. And then we've got a bit of a bumpy, bumpy body. How many bumps have we got? One, two, three, four bumps. One, two, three, four. And then I'm going to come down, go to a spike, and then to its back. And that is not far off. Now, I was saying about getting messages. I'm going to just put the, put his little, I 
think they're called antenna. I could be wrong. I'm not, as we've found with previous weeks, I'm not David Attenborough. I draw pictures. Um, <clears throat> so that's not bad. That's not bad for an illustration of the outline of the butterfly. Now, this is obviously a smooth curve. It doesn't need to be a smooth curve. We need to break it up with some of this pattern here. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go in there. And I'm going to go in there and up and round there. Another one in there, down. And you, you know, it's a butterfly. It can look like anything you want it to look like. I sound like Bob Ross. I'm going to do some Bob Rossisms tonight. Been called the Mank Bob Ross this last week by certain people other than having a beard. And I hope at some stage in the future, I'm going to do a full session with Bob Ross's wig and hair. Just just cause. Just cause. Why not? Why not out of the next six classes? That's worth signing up for anyway. Why not sign up just to see me being Mank and Bob Ross? Okay. Now you're all uh, smiling at your drawings. I'm going to do a very soft shading of this. So in the end, we're going to end up with a hopefully a simple illustration of a butterfly. We can add to it later with just a bit more... Uh, a bit more detail so i'm going to do this bottom wing first and again we're breaking it up into these sections uh, there and we're going to go into there and we've got another one which goes from the spine to there and there to there we've got a weird one in the middle okay let's have a look okay okay there we go so that's the bottom wing that's that's that in place now the top wing has got one two three oh three okay so the three joins up here so i'm gonna go i'm gonna go one into there two into there three well, it's not quite perfect but it'll do i've gone a bit high but fair enough okay and then we've got these, we've got a ball in each. So we'll have one there, one there, and a bigger one. Yeah. And then they've got a smaller one and a tiny one. And then this last bit, I mean, you can design this how you want. Any any sort of shapes or elaborate little curves and stuff. At the end of the day, it's a butterfly. It's meant to be look fancy. So there, there. From there and then this last bit is literally just dividing this into sections yeah okay there, there. and then we'll just carry it around I think and there's our there's our reference there's our picture mine's slightly bigger I'm gonna change it now I'm just gonna get a heavier pencil and okay and I'm just going to give some detail now just to this, a little bit of heaviness. So we'll end up with like an illustration that you'd get in a book describing Mr. Butterfly. Okay. And then we'll make that heavier. But the main thing is, as with every other week that I've shown you, use a really nice light pencil just to get things right. Once you know it looks like it, then you can't really go wrong. Once you know it looks like it with a light pencil, so I'm going to go around all the outside now. Okay. There. Two. I've been very, very rock and roll today, if anybody's seen my Instagram. I've been doing an uh, art signing with Peter Hook from New Order. Ex-New Order, should I say. And Joy Division. I forget that our incredible icon he is, and I'm stood there signing pictures with him. Like I'm some sort of rock star. Um, but very cool. Very cool and made me feel like I'd been out and done something. Okay. And this is a very, very precise illustration. You know, all the lines are really defined. If you wanted to, you could do all the shading perfectly. 
but tonight I'm just what I wanted to do was just get everybody in the mood to draw and draw in something different simple something not too intimidating because that's the thing what I've said a few times is don't let it be intimidating it's only it's only shapes it's just shapes done in a different way <laughs> there we go Mr Butterfly is complete let's just give him a little shade in between so we know what is uh, very quickly one two three four five same under here we'll have that that, that. And i'm just going to do a couple of spiny bits out from here so it looks like the, the wing gets tighter as it gets to the body which it does And there is a butterfly, a butterfly doing its thing. So easy, easy. Hopefully everybody's got a butterfly we can show off in 15 minutes. Cheers to everybody. So the fun starts now and the fun is at my expense. So I will get rid of that butterfly. I'll share it again later on social with the original. I was asked by uh, Rebecca uh, to do that last week because I know her partner Kay loves doing these classes. So shout out to her. It's her time to switch off in the week. Um, so and she, I know she's really enjoying doing them. So what we are going to draw next could lead to some entertainment. We're going to draw a face. And the question is, how do we go about drawing a face? And whose face are we going to draw? Okay, here we go. <laughs> this, this fella is won rear of the year. He's won best haircut of the 80s. He's won best glasses wearer, 2010. And all sorts of manner of things. And this is me. We're going to have a go, somehow, at drawing me. So when this goes on social media later, I expect to see a little bit of entertainment. Now, this could be dangerous, because I've got to draw myself as well, which is something that I've only ever done once. So it could go horribly wrong, but you can draw along with me. If it goes horribly wrong, such is life. That's the way it is. I'm going to stick... I want to make sure everybody can see me there and I'll stick me there. Oof. Okay, I'm just going to stick me on the page so we're not moving all over the show. Right, so the bulk of the class tonight is going to be attempting to draw this handsome artist. Um, and I'm going to use again, I'm going to use a H. And what I've done as well as a bit of homework, and again, you can do this any way you want. If you just want the picture on screen there and you want to try and draw me however you wish, then just go ahead and get on with it. And let's have a look later. Share on Instagram, share on Facebook, tag me in. I share everything that's sent to me, I always add to my stories. So Thursday night on Instagram literally becomes art class overload. Now, this is where you work out whether you've got a funny shaped head. So I think I'm not doing bad there, actually. It's not too bad. But if you think this is intimidating to draw, then this doesn't make it look as intimidating because you're just drawing the shapes. You know, you, if you can get the shapes and get the eye line right, hopefully we will be able to get there. Another way of drawing portraits, if you want to practice at any time after the class or in the future, because we over the next six weeks, we will be doing more portraits, is do it on a grid. Now, if you do it on a grid, you basically, all you have to do is get the grid on the page. So, for instance, if I went over here and I recreated, can you see that? Hopefully you can see that. If I recreated the grid to scale on here, on this page, I could then work out what was inside each square. So if as long as you know within that square and that square, there's an ear, 
and it sort of looks like that and then they goes down like that and then he goes down to the third along it's basically all you're doing is plotting a graph so you'll end up with something that looks hopefully like like the guy out of moby yeah which is me so you've got your options you can do that at a later date i'll leave that on screen if anybody wants to take a screenshot okay we've got this option which is just drawing those shapes and then taking it from there or we just trust trust what we've been learning over the last few weeks and just have a go at seeing if we can recreate this person here whether it be me whether it be anybody whether it be my twin george clooney or somebody on them sort of levels let's just give it a go and see where we get and i trust me i've never drawn myself before other than once so if it goes wrong it goes wrong it's no big deal so let's get where's that other one gone let's get that because at least this one gives us this one at least gives us the eye line in the right position so i'm going to keep that as reference for myself so i think the first thing i would do with this is i would draw a straight line so I'm going to draw a straight line, as straight as I can get it, very faint across the page. And this will determine as well how wide you're deciding to do your drawing. Now I've got to work out what, <laughs> what space I've got. So I'm actually going to ignore what I've just done. I'm going to draw another straight line. Okay, in fact, I'm going to break this into straight lines. So let's go one, two, and these are all equal distance apart at the minute. Okay. Now with eyes, the thing with eyes, let's let's d decide where we're going to do the first eye. So I'm going to go here, and I'm literally just going to do that. So that is where we are going to define as the that part of the drawing, and that's where that is, and that's where we're going to work away from. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just attempt to try and draw from that area. And what I would say here is draw the eye in as you see it. So I'm just going to just see if I can help with this situation. You know, again, it's a little bit closer up. God, I've got some lines on my eyes, haven't I? So we look at the shape of the eye. We know that's the center. So that's the pupil. And I'm going to just draw in very faintly. And again, we can change all this later on. Anything that's wrong, I can draw again or rub out, start again. And I've got quite thin eyes in this picture because I'm smiling. And I'll go out there. Right. Now, generally, usually, eyes are one distance, are I, eyes are one eye apart, usually. So the distance between the end of my eye there the end of my eye there should be that gap between your eyes so there to there to there to there should be three equal measurements now i can do this i've got a little scrap of paper give me a minute i've got a little scrap of paper here you can do it with a ruler if you want so let's try it there's my eye there's my eye go along faint line okay there's my eye and there's my eye Faint line. That's not a bad way of doing it. Never done that before. But So what we will end up with by the end of this class is a sketch of me. Doesn't have to be a fully fledged picture of me. Just has to be a sketch of what you see. Okay. And all right. There we go. So that's the starting point. We've got two eyes. We think they're not far off in the right position. Now my eyeball slightly to the left of the eye so again there and let's go there let's go there now your eyeballs are always the same size irregardless your little fact for the night it's the only part of your body that never grows when you are from when you were born to when you die that's good fact for the night isn't it? so your eyeballs are the same size when you're a baby as when you are not a baby they don't grow 
How about that? Oh, gosh, I might not be David Attenborough, but I think it's pretty incredible the facts that I can stream out of an evening. All right, so we've got two eyes. Yep, two eyes. Very basic. Like I said, I'm just showing you how I would measure this picture out. By the end of the class, we will have something that is resembles me. And then it's down to the detail of how you draw. Now, we've got the lid over here. So it's it's almost runs parallel there and then goes up slightly. So I'm going to go parallel to there. It goes almost not parallel and then almost down there. Oops. Okay. But it's still very faint. The same, same on the other side, just in reverse. So it's there. Goes quite close, quite close. The best thing about this for me is when I go on social media after the class and I just have to look at all these pictures of myself, which uh, should be quite amusing. Now, remember what I said about the eyeball when we were doing earlier weeks? An eyeball is a circle there. No matter what, it's always a circle and it's always another circle. It's always a donut. The only difference is that if I get a heavier pencil, if this describes it better, ignore the top bit, ignore the bottom. If I go like that and that, you know, this is the bit you don't see. So that's the only, that's the only magic. It's just got to be a circle inside a circle. What you tend to find is people will people will do this. This is what most people do, is they'll just do a shape that will never, ever be a circle in a million years. It has to be a circle. So make sure there's a little bit of a curve to it so it will, in fact, make a circle. So the eyeball within that should be equidistance. And again, like I say, it doesn't have to be perfect. Let's just do it as if it's there and on the other one. Obviously, because this was quite dark at the time, my eyeballs are not that too big. And I'm going to just put a little dot in the middle there for reference for where the light might be later on. So we've got a pair of eyes. And that has been a very simple procedure to get to that. I should have took my glasses off before the photo because that's just going to add to the pain of drawing. But it's an experiment we are trying to draw together. Now let's do a few of the wrinkles underneath that obviously I don't have. Um, okay, let's go. Um, let's go for this one first. So I'm going to go here. Here. Now if anybody watches Portrait Artist, I don't know if you do. Now I applied for Portrait Artist. Um, last year i didn't get chosen i got down to the last however many and i didn't get chosen i think it's down to just basically if your face fits etc and if you fit the program if you fit the program for that week but um i did a self-portrait then and what i did to move away from the fact that i didn't really want to do a self-portrait because i think doing a self-portrait is really hard to do because it reveals a lot is you know, I sent it off and I don't know. I just enjoyed the process, even though it was very difficult. Um, and I didn't know whether to apply again. Anyway, right. So glasses. I think we might put the glasses in next, possibly. Let me have a think. Let's have a look at the distance in now. I'm going to do another measurement again on, on my picture. I'm going to measure the actual eye in my picture. This is another way of getting something right. So just pretend that's the eye. Now from the edge of the eye to the edge of my face, funnily enough, it's perfect. The distance between the edge of the eye and the edge of your face is the same distance as your eye. Who knew? So let's do it again. If you want to do it accurately, eye, eye, that's the side of my face, okay? And the same with this. Let's go I, I, and is it the same on this side? No, because it's three quarter view, but not far off half. 
So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go I, I, there. I'm just going to half it. And let's have that vaguely as the side of my face. Right. So what we should be able to do now is start to put in extra details because we know where the side is. We should be able to get the height of the ear. So the height of the ear is the same as the height of that, vaguely. And like I say, nothing is perfectly accurate. On this side, the height of the ear should be the same again, ish. And that's the height of my ear. Okay, and then that my head should continue up that way. Now, what I would suggest now as well is go between both eyes, get right in the middle, draw a line right down here and I, as well i'm going to take it up a little bit as well just to give us a bit more reference okay right well, we've got loads of comments here i'm just have a little drink hi from berry hi from ireland joining in without paper digital all the time yes well in good stuff uh Hi, Auntie Lisa. Hi, Nicole. <laughs> um, hello from Texas. Middle generation of three back again. Love it. But one, one thing I didn't say about signing up for the classes, it's not per person. If you're in a household with three or four people, you want to sign up for six weeks, you sign up for your house and all of you will get access via the link. So, you know, don't think everybody who signs up has to, has to do it. Um, but, like I say, we are raising money for prevent breast cancer. I'm going to give a few facts out here and there as well. Like one in nine women and one in 1,000 men in the UK will develop the disease in their lifetime. And no, not many people are aware that men do get breast cancer. So it does affect everybody. Obviously, women a lot more than men. And it does, you know, does kill, kill people. And it's, uh, it's something that needs our support. Now I've done on a head here, I started drawing my glasses, so I'm just going to do that. I'm going to just go, and I'm looking at the reference of where above my eye, oops, let me pull me down a little bit, because this is, this is probably the hardest part of the picture. So I'm going to go and just follow what I think there, there, and then obviously this comes in here, just to the, to the join. There, so that's not far off. And then the curve, you just soften the curve up. But as we've shown over the last few weeks, is it's about learning that everything is a shape. So follow that right down there. That's fine. And now we need to sort of give an estimate of where we think that is below. Now I'm going to visually estimate for speed. Okay. And I know everybody tonight will not have a finished drawing. If you want to carry on drawing and spend a little time trying to get me a bit more accurate with a bit of shading, etc., then absolutely feel free to do that. That's what I really like is getting emails later on in the week. Uh, I, like I say, you sign up to the class, I give you access to one, a private email address. Send me your pictures by all means. And as everybody knows who has contacted me, I will always reply as soon as I am able to, and I will give you positive feedback or constructive feedback. Now the bridge, let's do the thinness of the glasses there. And the same with the butterfly, this will end up being more illustrative. But I want to make sure that we work out how, how we can draw somebody without being intimidated to draw. Now we know that's the side of the head, we know the glasses, Go wider than the head to there. And we know this side is here. And this just makes the process easier. Because once you've got a pencil drawing, I want to try with 10 minutes of the class left, hopefully, to have, you know, we've got half an hour yet, but I want with some part of the class left to have just at least the detail in place so we can attempt to do it. So the glasses, obviously, We'll run in line. Why have we got rubbish glasses? Okay, so we know that the bottom of the glasses will definitely run with there. We know the angle over this side. Let's go there. 
okay and now the the bridge the bridge of the glasses is almost center with the pupil so let's go and let's cause a little bridge and the bridge above goes there and it's almost to the top now i don't think that's wide enough so i'm going to just take that out again but this is it it's about molding the picture and getting getting the finished article and like i say i don't draw myself very often it is a bit odd but i think it will be quite fun to see what people have done and what they've done to me uh okay and i'm going to bring that in there and then there's a little curve around where it goes to over my ear yeah so we, we're getting there we're getting glasses all the shading will add the detail to this a lot better than i'm doing but it's giving you the idea of how i would go about it because once the sketch is in place like i say the sketch might take most of the time i've just done two portraits this week two commission portraits which have been really nice to just get back doing portraits again uh, after doing so much digital yeah not bad not bad and let's go there and let's curve it in there okay just contour around the camera it's a bit wonky there but i don't really mind we'll sort that out and we'll go up and over right so we have eyes in place this side needs to be a bit nearer the glasses i think that all i would say about that so far is the glasses are a bit wide that's why i would say if i've done anything wrong at this point but i'm not really that bothered to be honest i just want to get a representation of how I look and if I recognize myself I've done a good job now my ear we've already worked that out is in here just gonna speed up slightly now I've got to try and work out the nose so I'm gonna stretch the picture down a bit more and work out the nose so point of the nose is that line through the middle of the face goes to the point of the nose down there so we know the point of the nose is somewhere along this line so we know that's correct that bit there and that bit there let's go it's there ish it's there ish we know the width of the nose is somewhere in that region if we want to be super accurate we can do the measuring thing again if you want to, um, let's work out along the noses and then compare it to something else. Right, the nose is there. So the nose is that long. What else is that long? Just find something in your picture that's that long. The width of my glasses lens. Okay, hope that made sense. Just find something else in your picture that's the same. So it's about there to there. So there, which one was it? There to there, there to there. Yeah, okay. Now I'm going to try, just give my nose a bit of a curve because we know it's curved at the bottom. Yeah, we know it's curved and then it goes there. We know it goes about that wide and then it goes up. That might carry on. That carries on there. And then the same on the other side is the the and then we'll bring it in it's actually quite higher but you see it's just a process of breaking the pitch down so what i've done here that's wrong and i can see that it's wrong right now is this bit here this distance i've not made long enough because you can tell that because where the curve of that is is a lot closer on the picture to what it is here so I know that that's wrong. I know the glasses are not coming down far enough. I'm going to change it very quickly. I literally will go back and just just do a very quick a very quick overdraw because by the end of it, I want us all to have a sketch 
that looks like a face. And again, down here, it comes down lower. So we're not adding lots to it, but we are adding something that we had got wrong. So now it's getting closer and that's probably gonna be more accurate than where it was. Now these come out here and here. Now the next thing to work out is where the teeth are. I'm gonna do this visually, where the mouth is, just by my picture. Okay. And then I'm gonna undo a bit more picture all the way to my chin. So we can bring it down. Put it in the center. Now teeth are hard to do. That's another thing. Um, right, edge of the mouth. Where does it go? Almost to the center of the eyeball. So let's go. Center of the eyeball. Down, 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 down. Center of the eyeball on the other side, is it? Not far off. So center of the eyeball down, down, down. We know that's correct. We know that's accurate. We know that there, and we're going to go up, and we've got the little bit there, which I don't know what it's called. It's got some funny name. Mouthwise, how wide is it? Again, I'm just going to do this visually for speed. I would measure normally. We'll just hope that we're not a mile away without it looking silly. This side looks a bit more thinner. Bottom lip is here. I'm going to add in just some very light shading to give that idea that that's where we're going to shade. To there, to there. Now, a line, John, who's that picture of? <laughs> Dishy chap. Oh, God, I wish. Thank you, Louise. Always good to have you on board. Have a look, check out Louise Cannon's YouTube channel. There's a quick plug for you, Louise. Um, she sings, she's really good. Well, say she's really good, she's all right. Teeth, uh, a bit of a curvy one there. You can tell I had a brace when I was little. Teeth, that one's a bit dodge. And we've got that one there, that little gnasher there. A bit of a fangy one. And you can sort of see something in the background. I'm not overly bothered about that right now. And so there's that one. Gosh, I made me made my teeth look like like somebody from Dracula. But it's not a mile away from being from not being accurate. If you forget everything else, obviously my teeth underneath and you gotta do all the shading. The main part of it is what does the drawing look like? Chin. Now the bottom lip, I think I've done too big. Not big enough even. Big. Yeah. And then down, all the way down here to sort of jaw. Yeah. Look at me. How attractive do I look? Um, and then we've got this bit here, this bit here. You know, all this is going to transformed with the time to do the shading you got this this bit here but this is how i would start drawing it takes a while to get something that looks like the person but like i say as we're drawing everything else when you have drawn as many times as i have and spent time doing things measuring and stuff becomes very almost more visual a visual representation more so so we know that sort of goes there. We know it'll come out a bit there. Yeah. We know that that we know the side of the glasses. So the ear, for instance, the ear comes to the bottom of the nose. So we know that's not a mile away. We know that's got to go there. So then we can see what's wrong. So that's wrong there. So I'd already gone too much. That's wrong there. So that's already too much okay but then we got this here so that's better so that is more accurate than where it was before and the ear obviously comes down to the nose at the minute i'm just blocking it in 
same with the other side let's go where it comes down is pretty much in line with the bottom of the mouth it comes down to here ish let's go soft uh -huh. now we know that one's right we know that one's not a mile away so we'll bring that one all the way down and that can curve in yeah and then this one is part of almost part of your neck that makes me feel like i need to lose weight yeah neck is somewhere down here shoulders somewhere here and again shoulders yeah and it's not a mile away it's not a mile away but it is giving you the idea of don't be intimidated by a picture break it down take your time get things right put things in the right position mine is not going to be perfect i'm sure everybody else's is not going to be perfect but with time you just you know you can see what portraits i've i produce it just takes time to to build and build the confidence to get everything how you want okay so one thing i am going to do i'm going to just soften these teeth up because they're upsetting me one thing that i think is wrong is i don't think it's wide enough but in 20 minutes that is not easy because you got to do all the measuring and then the head is right up here And if, if it helps you, and I always do this, some, you know, when I'm doing pre-sketches and stuff, I do it really loosely. So I'll draw like this and get, then I can start to work out where, where shading's going to go, where these wrinkle lines are going to go, where these sort of creases are going to go. You can start working in this if you're happy with where you get into just going to be very quick here and just add just a little bit of shading just to hopefully pop it out a little bit so for everybody anyway who's joined us uh, if you've not joined us before lovely to have you here this is my art class i'm justin eagleton i'm a professional artist from manchester we've been doing some free art classes through lockdown we've built up a lovely community of people um and going forward we will be doing some more art classes uh to support prevent breast cancer uh which is the only uk charity entirely dedicated to the prevention and the prediction of breast cancer in men and women and that's based here in manchester but they do incredible work that affects everybody throughout the country research is literally the best in the world bar bar not my, not many um so it's a great charity to support lovely people and the more support they get the better it will be for everybody so all i'm doing here is the difference between having a pencil sketch where you've just worked out all the things and just very quickly if you ignore everything else now that might look weird is this is what you do now you get the eyes right and if the eyes are right you should then be able to build the drawing from it i'm going to just quickly yeah and eventually if i did this for every part of the drawing and took time took time to get it exactly you would then start to see me appear. So I'm going to give you the challenge over the next few days, if you want, and people who are coming back for week, week seven onwards, um, I'm going to give people the challenge to draw me better than I can draw myself. That's a bit weird. but I'm literally just trying now to just get a little bit of detail in so you can see how... A picture will change once you start adding a bit of detail you see what i mean this is now 
this will eventually start to build up. And if we're not far off accurate, we will have something that represents the person that you started off with. And that's the important part. So again, end of the class, if you could, or if you would, if you follow my YouTube, you can see some of the previous classes. Like I say, the class is all going forward now from this week onwards. We'll all be behind a page in my website. So when you subscribe and make the donation, etc., you'll get a code each week. You'll get one per week, depending on what you subscribe to. Either week one or all the weeks. And, uh, and then each week we will basically send you a code to access the extra classes. And you can go back and do them classes again. The only difference being that we are not putting them on YouTube. I'm just going to keep them as a private thing for a community that, you know, want to continue. I hope, I hope that we can get as many of the people who've done this class to carry on. It would be really lovely if you could. I know everybody won't, but if you want to, and if you can, and I feel like you want to donate to prevent breast cancer at the same time, that would be amazing. Right, I'm just going to pop my glasses in on one side. I'm dying to see these pictures now. And one thing I do promise, and one thing that I want to stick to, is whether you do the classes or not over the next six weeks, there will be an announcement at some stage, once we're able to, and once lockdown's done, I want to do a reunion of everybody who took part in these classes it's somewhere in the city centre for anybody who lives anywhere near to me, Manchester. Just just so we can all have a drink and have a little chat and catch up and all get to meet all the names that we've had each week. Uh, okay, so... This will give you an idea. I know lots of people did ask, can we do a portrait? And I know it's not easy. I know it's a difficult process and it does take a lot of time to learn. But eventually, if we just focus on this part, we will end up getting somebody that looks like me. Sort of. Now, I've discovered something very cool as well. In amongst my kit, I've got this blending pencil. So the difference with this is softens all this sort of stuff without me having to smudge the page so much. So you'll see now over this, this is how you get your pictures looking a lot more professional. Okay, and I'm gonna make this eye darker obviously. I'm going to go in here and make this darker. I'm going to make that a bit darker. See, I can see already just in this eye, it does actually look a bit like me. Yeah, I'm going to add the highlight. I'm going to really pop the highlight out. See, if you ignore everything, yeah, and just go to that little section, you will see, you will start to get somebody popping out the page who looks like a cross between Mulby and Neil Grinner. And eventually you will end up with a, a, a detailed image. And I'll just add a little bit of some of that. Yeah, can you start to see that? Obviously, there's lots more going on in here, depending on how big the picture is, how much detail you want to drag out of it. Shade that in, shade that in. And then all this here. So, yeah. And if you want, I'm going to add a little bit of 
a little bit of white on this bit just give that eye a little highlight so the thing that's you can see i think i think the glasses are too not not round enough so that's not perfect but it's not bad in 20 minutes okay and then i'm just going to add very quickly just a little bit of quick shading just to so we've got at least part of the face And that comes down here, but what goes there? I'm just going to sort of etch the ear in. Yeah, and then the head is there. And then you've got the, that cranium line there. Just gonna add a bit more there. Okay. Just gonna add a little pencil to it here so I can smudge it basically. Not for any other reason. Just so I can do this. And just give a bit of a representation of what I'm trying to achieve quickly. But if you start to look now just at this part of the picture, it is starting to be me, if that makes sense. This little element of picture using lots of different pencils, using lots of different shading techniques and with a bit more accuracy and thought, you will end up with something that looks like whoever it is you decide to draw. Okay. So last couple of minutes, all I'm going to say is thank you so much to everybody that's supported me over the last six weeks. Hopefully I've added something to your journey and your support network and it's given you something to focus on. I'm hoping that you will join me again. See, if I go like this now. Yeah. That's how we build up our drawing. We draw the sketch, we draw what we need to draw. And then we work out from that. So that's how we go about transforming pencil drawing from this to this. And eventually, let me get me out. Eventually, to, oh, get me under the camera. Nope. Oh, here we go. Eventually, we will end up with that. And that's a painting. That's my painting of me, which is gives you a bit of an idea of how accurate we can get it. Yeah. So hopefully that's something that everybody can learn from. Is It's not easy. It's quite difficult, but it is something that you can do if you learn the basics and the structure and just start to piece it together. So we are at the end of six weeks um you can watch this one back for a few days um and learn some of those techniques maybe take it slower maybe do it however you decide to do it i will share my little section on social media after so put put your images on instagram follow me at justin eagleton and facebook follow the youtube try and keep up with that let's all get the pictures out there Let's have a good laugh at what I should look like, could look like, and we'll take it from there. So if you want to sign up for next week's art class, go to the link that's on the page when you where you are now. You can sign up for one. If you want to just do next week, see what the difference is. Or you can sign up to all six and you get one week free. 20% of everything is going to go straight to Prevent Breast Cancer, who are the only UK charity who help with the prediction and prevention of breast cancer in the UK. So they are fantastic. If you want to use Art Class 10 at checkout for 10% off your class subscriptions, I'm going to do that tonight. 
for one week only because everybody's been so good and we've got such a great community. So use code ART class 10 at checkout and you'll get 10% off your class subscriptions. So that's my gift back to you. And I hope we can retain as much of this community as we can. And we will be joined next week by more people who will hopefully be coming from the Prevent Breast Cancer family. So we'll have a little bit of competition next week and we can show them what we're, what we're made of. So I'd like to say a big thank you. It's been six weeks. Something that I set out as being a sort of small thing, free classes. Let's try and get people out doing something different, a bit out of their comfort zone. I think it's gone well. It's been 700 people subscribed, so I think it has gone very well. And I hope I've helped a lot of people as much as it's helped me throughout this time. So I want to say goodbye. I'll see you. Hopefully I'll see all of you next week. Maybe not. Maybe some. Get in touch if you need any help, any advice, any more advice. Follow me email. Follow all the social. And there'll be a lot more news over the coming days of how the classes are going to go going forward. So thank you very much. Cheers to everybody. Stay safe. And I will see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.